Good morning, everybody. This is Eureka Street Crypto Hub, and I'm Eureka John. And this is my morning show. It is 5.57 in the morning, broadcasting live on Theta TV from Leander, Texas. And uh, it is July 3rd, 2021, one day before Independence Day in the United States. Hopefully tomorrow we'll maybe wake up some people and realize why we are independent because we are contentious buttholes that don't give in to authority and structure. Um, but yes, um, yeah, I, I'm up at 5.58. I got up at you know 4.30 this morning and uh, I got out of bed at five and you know, I, I just, I set my alarm for six today. I was like, I'm gonna sleep in. <laughs> And uh, I wake up early, you know, just because my body wakes up. Basically, I mean, to be honest, I had morning wood and I had to pee so bad. And I was just like, dude, um, I just woke up and, you know, I go to the bathroom, do that whole thing where I lean against the wall. And I'm just like, oh, man. And uh, and uh, I just couldn't go back to sleep. So here I am. I was like, man, I guess I'll just go downstairs and start reading up on some, some articles and, you know, put a show together. So here. Yeah, here I am, man, doing the deal every single morning, um, you know, between five and seven in the morning, every single morning since uh, February 6th of 2020, and I've been doing this show since October 24th, no, it's February 6th of 2021, and I've been doing this show since uh, October 24th, 2020, and that's when I was trying to figure out what time works best, what format, etc., getting the workflow down of exactly how to do a show. Um, but yeah, this is my video blog and my journey in crypto and me just trying to figure this stuff out on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, having this show and being disciplined and motivated to do it every single day motivates me to learn something new every day. It kind of gives me a kick in the butt and it forces me to at least read some articles. Um, and then uh, I'll have something to talk about on the next day. So, And as a result, I learned something. And then through that, through viewer suggestions and comments and links being thrown to me, um, I've uh, you know, gotten into some projects, um, I've gotten into some DAOs, and uh, yeah, man, it's, it's been an interesting ride so far. If, you, if I looked back at day one, I ah, see, there goes my alarm. <laughs> all right, all right. I looked back at day one, and uh, yeah, I was uh, really uh, nervous and awkward. Um, it is kind of a nerve-wracking ordeal, you know, even getting up here just knowing that any random schmo in the world can see what you're saying sometimes and uh yeah um yeah <laughs> but uh yeah so let's get on to some content here uh coin gecko i prefer to use this um <clears throat> like what do you call these things coin gecko coin market cap coin paprika coin codex like uh, market bleh, aggregators of token status <laughs> i don't know um so uh, let's see here. <clears throat> uh, Bitcoin is at thirty-four thousand six hundred ninety-four dollars and twenty-eight cents. Ethereum, two thousand two hundred twenty-five dollars and thirty-eight cents. Um, they're both up respectively five percent and eight point nine percent from the past twenty-four hours. Okay, so let's see how many stable coins we have in the top ten. Still three stable coins in the top ten, and I keep it talking about this but it's important it shows me how many people in the entire crypto market have their stuff set aside in stable coins uh waiting for good times to jump in and trade um and uh, cardano up a dollar 43 up 9.9 percent um so that's you know got a nice little you know push to it uh binance coin oh yep yep binance coin 6.3 percent so everything's up kind of green in the past 24 hours that's that is good uh the dage three up 3.0 percent to 24 percent 24 cents almost 20 not five but not quite there uh xrp 67 cents up 62.2 percent polka dot 15.3 up 5.6 percent uh uniswap 18 dollars and 96 cents up 10.1 percent um, Bitcoin Cash 513.27, 6 6.8%. Solana 35.33%, 10.4%. Litecoin 140.20, up 6.2%. Chainlink up 7.3% to 18.72. Ethereum Classic 57.78, 11.9%. I don't know how Ethereum does it. Like I said yesterday, is the Ethereum Classic a zombie chain? What is going on? You don't see a lot of GitHub activity on there. 
Uh, Polygon, $1.14, up 8%. Uh, the ICP Clown Token um, up 11.4%, and then Theta Network up 8%. <clears throat> Theta Network, a lot of people expected it to just fire off like a rocket. Um, things like this take time. You know, people are buying the rumor and selling the news. The news was that Theta moved to Theta 3.0, um, and that Katy Perry is adopting NFTs on the Theta Network as well. And this is so much going on with Theta. That is a, a slow train going, but it is going. And um, <clears throat> once it gets up to velocity, it will not stop. I believe this wholeheartedly. Um, Ave is up 19.0%. Cosmos up 12.4%. <coughs> I have both Ave and Cosmos <laughs> um, in my portfolio. Uh, Celsius up 5.8% to 6.49. And let's see here. Uh, as we scroll on down, T Fuel. 37 cents um it's down but it's up in the past 24 hours to 3.2 percent i think um a lot of it is being locked up in the edge nodes um but apparently and i don't know all this for a fact but i think binance is releasing a huge amount onto the market and releasing a lot of their uh their t fuel um that was locked up on a cold wallets so that could be a reason for some of this uh, downward momentum in the past couple days but um, with all the T fuel being locked up on all the nodes, I expect T fuel and Theta token for that matter to uh, be doing very well very soon. <clears throat> and I know I'm always permeable on, on Theta, but it's true. Uh, let's see what else. Um, as it's good to see BitTorrent actually come back at 4.8 percent. I wouldn't say come back, but you know, um, Hedera Hashgraph 1.6 percent, 19 cents. Uh, yeah, you got that whole class and category of tokens: uh, Hedera Hashgraph, Q and the Quant token, Stella XR, uh, Stellar XRP. Um, I believe, yes, yeah, so they are all kind of these World Economic Forum Great Reset tokens. And people say, just wait till the Great Reset, then you'll see. You know, all the tokens, you know, that means something. Stick around. Uh, that's only if the Great Reset is 100% successful. Uh, people assume that there will be no uh, pushback to the Great Reset. Um, so, yeah, uh, we, we're going to have varied opinions, but, uh, you know. Uh, what's up, VideoTuber? He says, Elon tweeted again. Oh, no. What did Elon have to say? Um, do I want to go look and see what Elon said? Uh, oh, is that was that why the market is bullish? <laughs> Are you being facetious, or are you? Do you really mean that Elon tweeted again? Um, I don't. I think this is his real account. Um, <clears throat> I don't. I don't even follow Elon. Actually, I don't think I ever felt followed Elon Musk. But uh, um, don't kill what you hate. Say what you. Dogecoin, Polytopia. Um, that was 21 hours ago. Now let's see what this this uh, little graphic says. <coughs> Tesla might accept Bitcoin again, is what you're saying. Um, uh, okay. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really uh, pay attention too much to what Elon Musk does. I kind of am over here beaten to my own weird ass drum. Um, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so, yeah. That's um, pretty much the ones that I wanted to look at. Synthetics is at $7.20. Quant is, at, is up 17.1% at $79.36. Zillica, uh, I have a pretty good uh, bag of Zillica, up to eight cents again from seven cents, so that's good. Um, I mean, I wanted to get back up to twenty-five cents where it was, or twenty-four point nine percent, or whatever. Uh, you know, twenty point two four nine cents. Uh, Bancor three twenty-six, good. And um, and oh, real quickly while I'm thinking about it, I want to see where Secret Network is, S C R T, and. Uh, <clears throat> Secret Network is at a dollar two, up three point zero percent, up five point six percent in the past seven days. Um, and then what was another one? There was Secret Network. Oh, Unibright. I want to see where Unibright is. I've, this is one of those that I've had since it's like you know been near a penny. So uh, I'm doing doing super all right with that one. Um, Okay, I'm at now. Dollar twenty-six up twelve point five percent in the past. Oh man, this has been green for quite a while now. Uh, and I know they have all these partnerships going on and stuff like that. Am I mining ETH Zill dual mining? No, I am not mining ETH Zill, Zill but I do have my Zillica staked 
Um, on the atomic staking platform, it gathers like a 14% APY, and it, uh, every thousand uh, zil that you earn staking, you get a, a G zil, and then incrementally up until you earn that G zil, you earn you know portions of the G zil token. So I'm also earning G zil. Uh, I tried mining ETH and zil. Uh, I'm just doing Ethereum only right now uh, because. It's just the rewards weren't good enough, and it was just like I wasn't earning, um, you know, I wasn't earning enough zilica by dual mining. I would have to e mine either or, you know. Um, so, yeah. So let's see. Uh, he mines both on ezil.me pool. Uh, promo code is okay. All right. Um, yeah, I'll check that out. Um, and I. Guys, I know you say don't ever, you know, you know, trust somebody who's telling you to go to some extent. No, no, I, I've seen video tuber on here. He's been around a while. This is a legit um, reference, so don't worry. Uh, it is not a scammer, so I know that for sure. Uh, so yeah, I will check that out <clears throat> um, and uh, see what's up with that. Um, let's see here. He says, oh, about the mining rewards for Zilliqa. He says, so it's not a loss of Ether reward, huh? Okay, man, well, might be a topic for tomorrow's show. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. I um, was scrolling through some things, trying to figure out what I specifically wanted to focus on. Uh, before I get to this, um, I was, I've been thinking a lot about DAOs because I am in a DAO. I'm in the Bankless DAO, and I'm also um, uh, pretty involved with the Komodo blockchain um, uh, uh, Discord. And you know, there's a lot of community stuff going on. And uh, in DAOs, it's all about community. Um, it's you know, all about uh, mutual equal participation in that community to come up with decisions that, uh, uh, I mean, yes, I guess it's not always majority rule, um, but in a sense it is. Uh, it's almost like a meritocracy in a lot of ways too. I, I don't know, I mean, but <clears throat> okay. To first understand DAOs, let's look at the Green Bay Packers. So a DAO is an auto decentralized autonomous organization. And I'm trying to verbally articulate DAOs because I get asked about DAOs pretty frequently, uh, surprisingly, um, because they're starting to pop up in the news and uh, people say DAOs and they throw around the word quite a bit. And uh, it's, a, it's a new word for a lot of people. So it means decentralized autonomous organization. Traditionally, all companies, LLCs, incorporated, uh, I guess in, in uh, Central and South America, it's .sa in Mexico. Um, so um, yeah, there's the, you know, the bosses and the executive level at the top, you know, and then there's down, yeah, as you move down, there's lots of different departments and a lot of those departments silo off into their own departments, which have their own you know, hierarchical top-down structure. And a lot of times these departments don't even talk to each other either. Uh, they create silos, and as you know, for those people who might not have a good command of English, silos are the tall structures in uh, rural agrarian areas that hold the grains, the wheat, uh, the you know, the rice, you know, whatever, and uh, you know, they are all contained within one tall silo, and they do not mix, and uh, that is the description. So DAOs kind of um, can eliminate this. Um, and uh, there's no top-down type of structure, ideally. Um, I can see, and for, just from interacting with some DAOs, how it all kind of defaults, because part of our human nature is to want to lead and follow and to mimic and everything like that. Um, but uh, um, the ideal is, is you know, that everybody should be, have part ownership according to you know, the, the participants and everybody has a vote. So. Um, Green Bay Packers are a really good example illustration of a DAO before DAOs. Um, the 100,000 person town of Green Bay shouldn't be able to sustain a professional sports team and yet it's home to one of the most successful franchises in NFL in the NFL I was gonna add NFL history which is absolutely true um, cryptocurrencies cryptocurrencies DAOs will eventually replicate this success on a very large scale um, so here's some of the facts that don't sound like they add up. <clears throat> the population of Green Bay is 105,000. I've never been to Green Bay, but I can imagine, you know, I basically came from a suburb um, in Houston growing up of around, you know, close to that, uh, close to 100,000. 
And, uh, you know, Houston is a massive city. And uh, so even the suburbs can look, be bigger than the entire town of Green Bay. So that was like my suburb having its own, you know, world-class professional football team. Um, the Lambeau Field, of home of the Green Bay Packers, has a capacity of 81,000. So that's pretty much a large percentage of the city uh, going to attend. Uh, and they, they, they sell out every home game for the past 60 years. Um, so the Packers have most wins and highest winning percentage of any team in the NFL. Was it Vince Lombardi, one of the most famous coaches in the entire uh, NFL history? You know, um, so anyway, despite having by far the smallest market size, the Packers are the 12th most valuable team in the NFL and the 27th most valuable team in the world. That is incredible, um, especially when you think of a lot of the large um, soccer, uh, football clubs, football, not football, but football, and uh, how can it be that such a small town has sustained such a successful team? Community ownership, aka DAO, Decentralized Autonomous Organization. The Packers are the only U.S. sports team that is owned collectively by its fans, not by a centralized group or person. And as it turns out, organizations that build public goods are better when the community stakeholders are in charge. You might not think professional sports is a public good, but that's because team ownership structures have bastardized this fact. I mean, I guess it is a public good. You know, you give the, the people bread and circus and they'll be happy, right? Um, and then they'll be distracted from all the other corruption and, and crap that goes on. Um, so it's a double-edged sword. Um, the most valuable thing sports teams create for their fans is the feeling of pride and unity. So that is true. It does unite and create a cohesion amongst a community. And a lot of times with that cohesion, a community can definitely be unconquerable. Um, everything else is secondary. Entertainment value, merchandise, eyeballs for advertising, and so on. More than anything, fans want their team to win games. And when their team wins, every fan benefits regardless if they paid money for it. This is by definition... Uh, a public good because it brings in revenue for the entire community when the team wins. Uh, sports franchises, however, are still money-making enterprises that can be very valuable, which creates a conflict of interest for central ownership. Sure, central ownership wants the team to win games, but only to the extent that it supports their number one goal, which is to make money. Teams with central ownership routinely make decisions that are absolutely catastrophic for the public good of their team, like selling high-performance players to cash in on their success, moving the team to a new city. That Oh, man, I remember in Houston growing up and the Oilers, um, Bud Adams decided to move the Oilers to Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee. Ooh, hey, Randy, how you doing? Good morning. Uh, Bud Adams decided to move the Oilers to Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee, and the entire city of Houston was so pissed off. Oh, I remember. I mean, I wasn't even that big of a football fan growing up as a kid, but when I learned that Bud Adams was going to move the Oilers, to Nashville, Tennessee, <sighs> still makes me shudder just thinking about it. You know, then it was Tennessee Oilers. And you're like, you can't have it. They're the Oilers in, in, in Tennessee. And then eventually they changed their name to Titans, which I think is kind of a lame name, honestly, for a football team uh, in Tennessee. It should be something more Tennessee-ish, you know, uh, like, uh, you know, maybe, uh, what is it? What, when somebody creates moonshine, um, what's the word for that? The person that creates moonshine um, illegally. Uh, uh, wow, man, it's on the tip of my tongue. I know that word. So if you think of that word, tell me. Um, moonshiners, not moonshiners. Uh, what are they called? Oh, man. Anyway, so I got off on a tangent. But... <laughs> <laughs> Forget to see it's still a touchy subject for me, you know, the, the Houston Oilers moving to Tennessee. Um, but uh, um, for a community owned team like the Green Bay Packers, these decisions are off the table because their priorities are reversed. Bootleggers that's what the word is the bootleggers. So the Tennessee football team should be called the bootleggers instead of the Tennessee Titans. That's just my personal opinion. So anyway, for a community owned team like the Green Bay Packers, these decisions are off the table because their priorities are reversed. Sure, the Packers want to make money, but only to the extent that it supports their number one goal, which is to be a source of pride for the city. And the DAOs work the same way. You know, a good DAO has a very active, engaged participants. Um, Oh, Randy said, uh, or Tennessee White Lightning. That is a really good, <laughs> good name too. Um, so uh, anyway, um, 
a good DAO wants to have pride in their organization. They want their organization to do well. They want to be able to run around wearing the badge of their organization and saying, look at me, dude, I belong to this DAO. You know, I'm part of the bankless DAO. So I want to run around and, and uh, show that I am, I, uh, um, I'm a part of this DAO. I actually helped um, one of the DAO members. Oh, not wrong, wrong tab here. Um, okay, I'll just go to this one. I actually helped one of the DAOs um, that one of the DAO members update their uh, their profile pic, and uh, I created this right here, this little monkey you know, with a pouch below, you know, showing his stuff and his pride, and I put the Bankless DAO logo right there, and uh, he's aping in, aping into DAO, you know. So anyway, um, being a DAO member is part of being a team. It doesn't mean part of being ownership of that team. Um, it, 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 it's just a community effort. And so the Packers have shown through their $2.5 billion valuation that, these, okay, so sure the Packers want to make money, but only to the extent that it supports their number one goal, which is to be a source of pride for the city. And the Packers have shown through their $2.5 billion valuation that these are not mutually exclusive. Ownership in the Packers is represented by approximately five million dollars, five million outstanding shares, and no one can own more than four percent of the supply. So nobody's coming in and being a whale in the Dow either. Um, shares give you voting rights and nothing else. No dividends, profit sharing, or even securities and protections. Those familiar with Dow's and crypto will recognize this asset as a relatively standard governance token. Yeah, so. Dawn of the DAO era. If you're not familiar with DAOs, decentralized autonomous organizations, they are cryptocurrency based organizations where decisions are made by a collective of participants rather than a central person or group and whose rules and processes are all recorded on immutable ledgers. Voting rights are typically tied to ownership of a voting of a governance token. Um, <clears throat> so DAOs first came about as a necessity because decentralized protocols need decentralized management for security. So cryptocurrency and DAOs and everything is all about trans uh, decentralization and transparency that's why we have github the github repository for code so everybody can check code look for a potential source of hacks and attacks and then also look for corruption now, the first DAO came with the first cryptocurrency since bitcoin source code needs to be managed by a collective that can't be attacked just like its core protocol but DAOs are turned good for two things it turns out Building decentralized products and services that need high security, you would think more transparency would not equal high security, but it does. And then building public goods where value is shared by a community. And uh, I know uh, in religion, a lot of times you see when you bring something out in the light, it is more pure and good and and uh, and worthy. And um, this applies to having transparency through things rather than doing things in the dark and in secret will uh, bring honesty and integrity and purity to whatever you're doing and therefore a huge ironically a sense of security and um, and yeah so it is security in its purest form is a hundred percent transparency uh, so cryptocurrency in many ways likes to reinvent things that already already exist and in the case of DAOs it recreated the ownership structure of the Green Bay Packers in order for in trying to solve for number one above, which is building decentralized products that need high security, the crypto community stumbled into a scalable solution for public good funding, uh, the main source of capitalism's problems. Um, and this becomes a problem too when uh, very wealthy VCs come in and try to fund DAOs and stuff as well. Um, so people say that that's a point of centralization. Um, so. Uh, of course, the DAO that manages Bitcoin's source code looks very different than the Green Bay Packers because decentralization for security is a different goal than decentralization to align incentives with the community. The Packers have a front office that runs day-to-day -day operations behind closed doors and community owners are only occasionally called on to cast votes or join meetings. For better or worse, lots of cryptocurrency DAOs today look like this as well. I, yeah, that, that's true, but they're... There does need to be an operations uh, the guild or department or, or a sector within a DAO to take care of the day-to-day -day stuff, to be there every day, to answer the Discord or whatever, to take care of, uh, to set up the community call meetings and stuff like that. Uh, should they have more power in the community? You know, ideally, no. Do they? Yeah, a lot of times they do uh, because they know just by being around all the time. You know, so time is in a way authority um you know the more time you invest in something naturally the more authority you end up obtaining uh with said um uh entity so 
Centralization can help with organizational efficiency, but it also works if the community can trust those that represent them. If the community is empowered to the extent that operational decisions reflect the value they want to see created. Um, so uh, that also takes the community members also doing things openly in the light, not in the dark, behind closed doors, and engaging in the community and making sure that they are out there, you know, cleaning the toilets and sweeping the streets and sidewalks and not just um, way up locked away in some, you know, high tower making decisions, looking down on everybody. So uh, we see this spectrum of decentralization throughout the DAO space. For example, Bright ID is a DAO working on identity uniqueness for civil resistance in Web3 and civil resistance is a type of hack attack in which um, hackers will create tons of different identities, separate identities, to try to um, overtake a network. And so each identity, I guess, for example, is tied to a node. And if some, one, ent one person has created a bunch of different identities and then created all these false nodes, then they create more than 51% of the network's nodes and they, it's kind of combined with a 51% attack where one person owns a buttload of identities and it overtakes the network with more than 51% of the network by one person who's created a ton of identities and that is not good. Um, so uh, Bright ID is a way of, they're trying to create a decentralized ID solution and they, they are a decentralized autonomous organization and uh, so they're working on ID issues and it's a very sensitive public good with a high trust threshold. So Bright ID's users demand a very open and transparent DAO because IDs are something that are necessary, but something that can also be super easily corrupted for uh, nefarious uses uh, for, of control. And as we you know, possibly see with these vaccine passports, that could be a source of, you know, of a major uh, oppression and are very problematic for a lot of people. I'm not gonna go down that debate rabbit hole, but I know where I stand on it and I don't like it. Um, so anyway, for DAOs on the other end of the spectrum, community empowerment can be in integrated into a centralized organizational structure by simply dedicating a portion of the treasury to its community. This is the concept behind One Hive Gardens, a token, a token governance platform for community-led funding proposals. So in this, so, you have one end where all the operations and everything are 100% transparent and uh, you know done by everybody in the DAO. And then you have on the other end where all the operations and stuff are pretty centralized, but all the money and the treasury is is uh, handled by the community as to how they're going to vote to allocate, allocate that. So there's two different ways you can approach it. Um, other DAOs that are focused on public good funding, Gitcoin, I've talked, I've just mentioned that up. I don't know Giveth, I don't know no one hive either. Uh, token engineering comments, huh, interesting. And then Circles UBI, um, that's an interesting concept. I can't even begin to go into that one, but uh, it's, a, yeah, it's an interesting concept. And then another one would be the Proof of Han Humanity UBI token. Um, I've mentioned that on uh, several shows back, um, maybe I guess a month ago. And then, uh, okay, so anyway, so perhaps the revolutionary concept of a public good DAO is this idea of a, a governance token. Public goods, um, by definition, cannot be owned, which is why we depend on governments and nonprofits to build them. Sports teams are an exception here since they're an intermixed public good and product. So there is a fine line, you know, and you see this dance between socialism and, and communism. It, how far into socialism do you go before it starts to become oppressive? I am total libertarian. I, you know, I... I do not like government at all, but you know, I can understand why people, you know, that people say, but the roads, you know, but the roads are made by private contractors, you know, and uh, I don't know, I'm not even going to go down that whole debate. Um, the roads were around well before there was any type of, uh, you know, a governance uh, structure taking care of them. Uh, but uh, while governance and nonprofits are rife with management flaws, many have still done well at creating value for public goods. What they don't have, however, is a financial asset that directly links the creation of a public good to a store of value. Uh, this has the potentially to dramatically increase public good funding by being much better financial investments than donations or taxes. So interesting, you know, and you know, like I said, I'm not, you know, I'm open to a lot of different ideas. I'm not closed minded to any type of government structure. I just, for me personally, I lean towards more towards libertarian and I realize there needs to be people that lean more socialist all in the same room together voting on the same issues so there can be a balance of opinions in there 
and uh, come to a workable solution. So recognize where you are, recognize the need for people on the other side, and everybody come together. Um, so anyway, the success of the Green Bay Packers is a good indicator that Dow's will eventually capture a lot of value. The only reason is what will happen first. Uh, will crypto DAOs learn to build the world's public goods or will the charities and government agencies that do this already learn to become better DAOs? And yeah, charities, you know, I, I, I love it when you go to the grocery store and they're like, yeah, would you like to help solve cancer? Would you like to give to the children? And you, what are you going to do? Like say, no, you know, no. And they just do it like, well, there's like a whole line of people behind you at the grocery store and it just makes it, it sounds like you hate children, you know? <laughs> No, it's not the case. You just don't want to give to some charity where you know like your money is just going to be going down through this trickle down effect where everybody takes their cut and it never and maybe only five percent of it actually gets to, to cancer research or children. And you know that goes on. So I would rather, you know, give a homeless guy on the street money, you know. And that's just my and directly or just help somebody out directly, help my neighbor out. Uh, you know, or help a church out or something going to some country bringing stuff directly to the people that need it rather than funnel it through some organization that's always going to take their cut for overhead, you know. Uh, so um, which way will DAOs go? I mean, this is also a good question to the structure of DAOs as well. How much is in operational costs, you know, that they budget out to themselves? These are all things to look at and to consider and to ponder with DAOs. But anyway, yeah, I just... You know, been involved in DAOs, and then I, you know, I saw this article about the Green Bay Packers, and I've always liked the Packers. They they are a fun football team, and I like Packers fans, and you know, yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, you know, I'm sure you know Viking fans might hate me for this, but uh, yeah. So all right, I um, I've gone 32 minutes. I've gone over. See, yeah. All right, maybe one day I'll create a more structured show. All right, I I will talk to you guys. Um, tomorrow and uh we'll see what tomorrow's show will be about i have several options on mind um all right uh yeah have a good day enjoy your independence day weekend and tomorrow is sunday so it's be the fourth of july so uh don't blow your hand off with some fireworks um yeah all right so let me put on this reggae outro music and um yeah have a good day i will talk to you tomorrow